Bye guys. I'm going to talk about living abroad, what it's like to live abroad and in particular what it's like to live in Warsaw, Poland. We have moved to Warsaw with my then boyfriend and a dog in 2017. We have moved here from Naples, Italy and we've moved here because of a job. So uh, when we moved here, we, before we moved here actually, we visited Warsaw uh, for a few days, for I think a week, and we really liked it. And, uh, but when we moved here we were pleasantly surprised about almost everything. One of the interesting points in this research that I've also done is that, as Wikipedia says, by January 1945, between 85% to 90% of the city had been completely destroyed. Keep that in mind that it's incredible how Poles, of course, were forced to rebuild everything, and indeed they did. So Warsaw is stunning. It's very modern, I, in my opinion, is very modern. In comparison to Prague, it's much more modern. There are many skyscrapers, they're building a lot of buildings. Now why I say in comparison to Prague is because actually I originally from Czech Republic, not from Prague, but from South, actually. So I do have a bit of awareness, of course, so I compare it. So Prague, of course, is very ancient or very old-ish, whereas Warsaw is very new. It's a young city. So let's talk about um, what it is that you notice about Warsaw when you come here. As I said today, Warsaw is a modern and a vibrant young city. It's booming with opportunities. And uh, what you will notice as a newcomer to the city is that, or at least what I noticed when I came here, was that there was there is a lot of construction work going. That's number one. There are a lot of apartments being built, a lot of infrastructure everything is being built. Number two, there's a lot of green, green, I'd call it greenery. Mm. Many trees, nature in general is respected. You notice that even if they build many new things, they always keep in mind that there is place for nature. So there, trees are respected, green spaces are respected, and parks are being even built. And that's great, because people do need to relax and people need their privacy at times. Even if you walk outside, sometimes you like to be alone somewhere and you just like to enjoy the space around you. Especially if it's nice, pretty and green. What I noticed also about uh, Warsaw, people tend to bike here fairly, quite, I mean, fairly a lot. They uh, even have the chance to bike, of course, because there is a Veturilo, which is one of the apparently largest ur bike, urban bike system in Europe, from what I've read. And Veturilo is one of them where you can land a bike, pay by credit card and, you know, drive to another station and leave the bike there. Of course, Warsaw has a lot of interesting museums to explore, be it the uh, scientific museum, the science museum or the... There's also planetarium, as far as I'm aware. I have actually been there, so yet yeah, there is one. 
and the most interesting that I've seen and liked was for example Pauline which was which is the Museum of the History of Polish Jews which was which is well done it's really well designed very well thought through and the way they did it is interesting and the shop the museum store where you can buy many books be it in English or Polish uh, is super great it's really great guys what I liked about Polin is the store the museum store there's a lot of interesting content you can buy books you can buy uh, coloring books for kids it's very nice really the price is great and it's both Polish and English so even uh, non-speaking non-polish speaking tourists can buy something for themselves as a souvenir and take it home and it's uh, a very good souvenir also then there is a nice place to eat where the restaurant is smaller but it's very tasty and they cook really well of course it's kosher food but not that it matters really and the place is called Besamin they sell also great wine and I really like the place I've been there a few times mainly because of the food uh, so if you are a big fan of Mediterranean cuisine or Middle Eastern cuisine you can go and visit it and have hummus or have shakshuka for example which is the egg omelette with tomatoes and other cool things so the menu is quite small but it's tasty I promise So Polin is one of those museums, then we have a museum, the Uprising Museum, where, where we went just recently uh, and uh, it was very interesting, it was very sad. What was most striking about this museum is that they have used, uh, they used a big stone and they, the stone is with, made with sound and it's the sound of a beating heart which means that this is, well, from what they explained, this is the beating heart of all the people that fell during the war. So the memory is still lives on and the beating heart is, is commemorating those that fell. And uh, I need to say that it's very tense. It's something that makes you feel super tense. You really just don't feel good I think that's how I view it viewed it and I can I could of course they they want to show you that war is nothing pleasant and when it, there's war you are tense and you you may lose anyone at any moment you can die at any moment so that the purpose of this has been fulfilled they are they, they really showed you what it what it can be like or what it's like and so it is it, it's quite I don't think it's that big but um, it was interesting and well, they also you can also go to on Sundays the entrance is free then it during the week is paid but obviously the price is just nothing it's quite small, especially if you want to go and educate yourself in this interactive way. So we went there on Sunday, it was for free and we also went to view we went we went to a viewing of the call of the 3D video that is called the city the city of ruins where they showed you I guess aerial view that they made back then of Warsaw and how it was completely destroyed to pieces that was not a nice view and I wouldn't really wish to have 
happen to any country but unfortunately it's not like that okay moving on let's move on to something more positive uh, what I also like about Warsaw is creativity I'd say this one word would summarize it all in my opinion Polish people are very creative that they uh, First of all, they've managed to rebuild Warsaw, they've managed to rebuild Poland. And uh, I find this creativity visible in, in their artsy cafes and um, restaurants with different concepts. And then I have music, uh, the movie, the film uh, industry. In, uh, in, and or if you know, there is, there is now Vogue Polska in Poland being published so Polish people are very much into you know many things and they want to be cool they want to grow as a nation and they want to be seen as a nation that is worthy and that they can do anything they want which is of course great and uh, admirable because any nation has the right to be like that so it, it's it's very nice I like it and that's what I wanted to say that you can find a lot of cool places to visit if you want a cup of coffee tea you just go and you can find anything for your own style I think if you are hipster hippie uh, a person that likes classical um, theater or books there is always a place for you here where you can do what you love then the other interesting or like think the other thing i like about warsaw in general is weather even if it can rain throughout almost whole year when it's autumn it usually rains a lot and then Warsaw becomes very gloomy and grey. During summer it can be very hot and during winter it can be very cold. So there is a season for everything and I like uh, this. I like this because then the season of everything is important. It's changing, it's not just one type of climate, it's many types of climate. And from Czech also I'm used to that so for me this was pleasant. When we lived in Naples, of course, it's mostly hot and it's very hot. That You cannot leave the house as much or you don't want to leave the house. You need to have the air conditioning all, all the time and it is limiting in some ways. Let's talk about food. Uh, food in Warsaw or in Poland in general, you may know about it, you may have heard so of course number one if i think or if i should say is pierogi pierogi is a type of dumpling that is filled with be it meat vegetables cottage cheese or even sweet fruit i mean fruit is fruits <laughs> fruit is sweet but with fruit and you can have uh, any variation you like um i like even pierogi with sweet with fruit <laughs> and I like pierogi with meat usually for example I do not like as much I do not like pierogi with mushrooms as much I find the taste don't they don't go that well together but that's a personal preference so pierogi with meat I will show you a picture just to so just to show you what it looks like and uh, then Poland Polish cuisine, in general, Polish cuisine is based on meat, potatoes, they like vegetables, of course, they like very much uh, cabbage and uh, beetroot. Beetroot, what I found in Poland, I have never seen that anywhere else, is that they can put beetroot in a sweet cake and that to me is a something that I'm not used to 
and really I don't like it because it just does not it's not compatible taste wise so every time there is a cake with beetroot I just cannot eat it uh, but I guess this is maybe connected with the creativity that people have here you know little experiments let's try this and this together and see what comes out Uh, that food in pot food you have also, uh, for example, schnitzel, pork schnitzel, which would be called schabovi s zemniakami, which would be the pork schnitzel with potatoes. And usually they also put dill on top. Dill is a very much loved by Polish people. They can put it into cottage cheese, they can put it on potatoes, they can cook sauce with it. So dill, beetroot, cabbage, meat, potatoes, that's something that is loved by locals and uh, I have to say I don't, at home I don't eat Polish cuisine that much, I do eat pierogi sometimes which I buy in the store, not that I cook them myself, um, but it's rare that you find really tasty pierogi. There is restaurants that can cook them really well and there are restaurants that cook them less well. Then I guess it all depends on you and what you personally like. And food, 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 that would be it. Let's talk about healthcare. Healthcare, for example, in Poland is quite good in my opinion, actually, it's very good. Um, if you have a full-time contract or a regular contract in general in Poland, you will have access to uh, Polish healthcare. And if you are a European citizen, you are also, I believe, entitled to have access to healthcare. Um, and in here, there is the NFS, which is the National Healthcare Provi Provider. And... Uh, they're very good, they far as, like benefits, as far as benefits, they, they give you a lot of care, healthcare, dentist, um, general doctors, and so on, GP. So, that's of course very much appreciated by people that come to live here and they need access uh, to healthcare. However, what might be the biggest disadvantage to public, public healthcare is that most doctors and nurses may not always speak English. And that's of course a problem for a person that is sick and stressed and they all they need to explain and be explained in return what's going on, what's wrong, and if you don't speak Polish then you are stuck in a limbo in a way because you really are you don't know and they don't know how to tell you everything so that's stressful but there is a solution uh, there is medicover that i want to mention i've used it a couple of times why i use it not because i cannot go to a polish doctor especially if i can speak czech and i can understand but I'd say it's because of the comfort that it offers. It's a bit more comfortable to go to MediCover because you can call them. They have a general hotline. They have a website in English. You can find everything you need. You can even see, you can even find a list of doctors they can, they can help you with. Uh, you know, and they even provide the biography of the doctor. So. You know, you can, you can learn about who you go before you go there. And that's useful if you really want to be already up to date before something. So that's great. And the MediCover is quite modern. Their hospitals or their uh, facilities are quite modern. They're well done. Hospitals in general, from what I know, you know, especially, okay, if they don't have that much money, they don't always uh, re redesign or rebuild. But the new newer facilities that are made by 
the newer healthcare facilities that are made are, you know, you feel just a little bit better when you come there. So this is what I like about Medicover, is the modern design or the modern building. Uh, the people mainly speak English, that's number one. You know, they, they will explain you what's going on and you can explain them what you need. And the, there is a lot of other advantages, I guess, even that you can usually, I heard about cases when it's not also fast, usually you can move through the whole process of, you know, going through some appointments much faster than if you go to a hospital. You don't also have to wait that long for your appointments or checkups as if you have to work with the uh, national healthcare provider. So there are advantages. Of course there are also disadvantages but again I think it all depends on what you really want to work with, what you can tolerate and what you don't want to tolerate. And then you establish the line for yourself, what you won't like or what you don't like. The other thing I want to talk about is bureaucracy, which is also a bit connected to the fact, to the language. So, of course, if you work in Poland and you need to pay taxes, you have to go to the tax office uh, every now and then <laughs> and uh, you have to pay your taxes. And uh, when it comes to tax forms, they're all in Polish, which surprises me because uh, they are actually learning uh, to cope with the fact that there are a lot of English speakers in this country and uh, they have websites in English, most of the food stores or you know, in restaurants they speak English, but it seems that the, the office still has to catch up a bit with the modern times. So most of these forms are in Polish and I don't understand everything in Polish and some words in Polish are really very foreign to me and I cannot, I just don't, I cannot guess even if I speak Czech, I cannot guess what it means. Uh, because in general letters, Polish letters are quite difficult and I think if, unless you really take lessons, written lessons, you will not really learn to write. By yourself because it's not in grammar in general in any language is something that needs practice you know focus practice and so uh, bureaucracy in Poland is that if you go to these office tax offices most of the workers they don't speak any English and you have to communicate however you have to communicate be it using Google Translate or the communication is tough, can be tough. I'm curious about those that really speak zero English, or, I'm sorry, Polish, and then they, they have to explain very top, like, you know, very important topics because you don't want to make mistake in the tax office. Mm. But thankfully, there are a lot of English websites that are written in English that explain a lot of things to you before you even do them. So then you can uh, do your research and know what, what, what is required of you to fulfill certain forms. And if you, have, if you work in a company in general, usually the company helps you uh, to fill the forms or if you are a sole worker, as in you work on, with your own company, you can always hire a advisor, of course, who will help you make sure that everything is done well and you will not have any issues in the future. And the last topic to conclude this video, because unfortunately I cannot mention everything and I love to keep this video in order not to keep this video too long, let's finish this dialogue by talking about apartments living in Warsaw. I will link you down below um, links to different website and also other website that I found interesting. So you, if you are interested, you can click through 
and see if you find something useful for your for you and what what it's like to pay rent in Warsaw. I think that in Warsaw the biggest advantage is that there's a lot of space everywhere for anyone as in if you look for any type of place you will most likely find it. It will probably also not take that long and probably whatever your budget is you know let's say smaller or bigger you can find something that you will be happy about I have for example to uh, compare give a comparison we as we know London is one of the most expensive cities in the world and if you compare of course rental price between London and Warsaw there is a huge difference but I'd say even the quality of life Sally want to afford or have is much bigger between London and Warsaw because here you can have an apartment or I don't know you rent a studio or a place family house and you will find a place that is really beautiful in ways and it's still affordable to a certain extent still still let's say if you have the budget you will most likely not overspend whereas in London you might spend a lot of money in order to live in something that is luxurious or stunning or, or very pretty and that's probably what I would say about the two also if I compare Warsaw to Italy or Naples I lived only in Naples I'd say also the prices are although my fiance says that the prices are more or less the same but all, again uh, the beauty of Warsaw is that it offers you variety of places it offers you a variety of buildings, uh, locations and you can really find something that is for you, that is where you truly feel comfortable. You don't really need to compromise, that would be it I'd say. The beauty of Warsaw living is that you don't have to compromise. I believe and maybe if you do, you probably rarely have to. And I guess this is why Warsaw is also so attractive to so many people because it's growing, new apartments are being built and different locations diff with different prices, with different sizes, different designs and truly you can find anything you like. I hope you found this video interesting. Um, I would be interested to hear from other people that live in Warsaw to, to tell me what they like or what they not like about Warsaw. As, you, as you've seen, I didn't focus on any negative points really. For me, there's not that many negative points. And uh, yeah, that, that would be it. Alright. Thanks for watching, bye bye, take care.